Hey, your Faith Win here with WinColor.com, and I am going to be going over the first section of my book, Unlocking the Freedom of Color, which is the reading for Module 1, which is on value. It's important that we understand this fully because we're going to use it in color theory and digital design, and if you don't understand kind of the language of what a I mean when I say a five value system, which you will understand hopefully at the end of this module, it'll be more or less impossible to understand the color theory and the digital design. So light theory or value theory is super, super important and acts as a foundation for the whole system and the whole book. First thing we wanna do is we're gonna say what is value? Value is how light or dark something is in reference to something else. Now, that is already too confusing for me. So instead, we're gonna call it how much light is on the object. That's what value is gonna mean to us. And that's how we think about it. And we'll learn what that means as we go, but I wanted you to hear it right at the beginning. So this value gradient right here is going to represent the range of value or the range of light that our eyes can see. On one side, we have black, which is just the complete absence, not a single little ray of light uh, coming from the sun or an artificial light source. Light it comes in rays and bounces around our environment, but there's none of that. That is black, complete absence of light. And then we also have pure white light, which is when our eyes get overloaded. It's past the range of light that we can see. But in here, we have all these gray values or gray shades of light. And here we see a perfectly balanced, smooth gradient, but this is too intense of a concept to start out with. So we're gonna break it down into what's called a value scale. Value scale is when we break down this gradient or these millions of shades of gray, and we're gonna only work with 10. And we chose 10 because these are the ones that clearly show a difference. Like that one and that one are clearly different from that one and that one. And this is very common, but again, it's just a little bit too complicated. So I do want to note that this is how gray wash sets are sold. So like if you had like a 10%, 20%, 30% gray wash, um, it's more or less the percentage is referring to what part of the scale or the gradient. Like that would be 30, that would be 60. Um, so I just wanted to get that across, but we're not going to work with 10 values at once. Instead, we're going to study light and how it works in our environment. And first of all, we want to say that as we look out into our environment or the world, we see light reflecting off objects and bouncing back into our eyes, bringing us color and shapes and forms. We don't actually see the object. We're seeing light bouncing off it. So we wanna see what properties this light has. So there are six properties of light that we wanna get into our artwork, into our tattoos, and here is what they are. And we're just gonna look at this sphere right here, which the sphere is a perfectly round 3D object. And we have a light source coming from up here and hitting our object at the white highlight. The highlight is where the light hits the object directly and bounces back into our eyes. Typically, the other areas and properties of light are going to follow outward. Um, you know, they follow the same direction every time, and you start to get used to the highlight being around this second one, which here, this is the, uh, the highlight. And then around that, we have an area that is the lightest part of the object, but it's not a highlight. So anywhere where we see a highlight, it's likely that we're going to see what's called a light, uh, light form shadow. And we just talked about a highlight. And after this area that's lightest, with the exception of the highlight, we're gonna have what's called a dark form shadow. The dark form shadow is our middle value. And when we get to color, it's going to be the brightest, most intense color on the object is always going to be red as this middle value. And when we combine all three of these, we can 
combine all three of these, sorry about that, we get this area, which becomes what's called our form shadow. The reason it's called a shadow is because technically anything that's not the highlight is a, technically in shadow. But I find that a little confusing, but we're not gonna call it that for the rest of the book. Uh, we're gonna break it down um, into values. Um, but for now, we just wanna understand that these form a form shadow. And now we're gonna talk about the last three, <clears throat> which is gonna be our shadow. And so now we're talking about this, this area down there. And The first area is going to be this kind of dark area right after we leave the light, uh, the form shadow. And this is uh, called middle gray or 50% gray. And it's that sharp line that kind of where the object no longer is being hit by the light. And then we also have um, a cast shadow. Cast shadow is where the object's blocking the light, kind of like Peter Pan shadow. And one thing I want to note that's important is this area of the object that's in shadow and this cast shadow they both would be black except for the fact that light bounces around and it's going to cause these areas of reflected light so that's why we don't have just pure black shadows so technically this core and cast shadow are going to be uh, black and then we have reflected light which are going to be our dark values. And then this middle value or dark form shadow. And then we have our light value or light form shadow. And then we have our highlight or our white. So what we've done, um, or here I can do the, this is reflected light and then that's reflected light. And then we have more more black. So the important thing that we need to understand here is that even though there are six properties of light, we only need five values because the core and cast shadow are both black except for where they're hit by reflected light. So if you understand that we have this form shadow, if, we, if you understand that we have six properties of light but only five values, then you've mastered the hardest part, I think, of light theory, because that confused me for a while. Um, and now we're gonna go on to the next page, which we see a the same six properties of light on a cone form. You can see right here, oops. You can see right here we have the highlight and then it goes in both directions. That's gonna be our light form shadow or light value. And then on the other side, same thing. And then we have our dark form shadow right next to the light form shadow. And then we have that harsh line and we get into our core shadow. We see our black area of the cast shadow as well. And then anything left is gonna be our reflected light. We could also break it down into just our form shadow, which is going in both directions. And then also that would be our shadow areas. There are a whole bunch more forms, cylinders uh, and egg shapes and things like that that you can also study if you like. I know that firesidetattoo.com has a module program, which also, which goes over that in a lot more detail because that's studying light and forms is really how this is gonna become easier. So, so we are going to start. So now we're gonna, now we're gonna do some practical learning, which means that it's gonna help us learn how to tattoo more easily while we're learning. So we are going to take this image of some pairs that I got at Petzels.com, which is free open source photography with great lighting. I use a lot of flowers off there. 
and we've just removed the color information and there will be a tutorial on wingcolor.com right with module one that will teach you how to do that using Photoshop Express. Here we see a larger look and what we want to do is we want to break down these pairs which I chose them because they're just a simple shape. We want to break them down and think about the properties of light and the five values that we want to create. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the black and the white, the two endpoints, because in a balanced composition, we kind of have to have those. So these two values are going to be the easiest. That's why we started with them. And we can see the black areas and the white areas. And even if we go back to the image, we kind of see like it's, it's going to be like it's on this dark side of the, of the pears and kind of on the stems. And then the white highlights are going to be, like I can see the white highlights over there. I can see the, the white highlights and that one right there and there. And I remember they were on the back. So we kind of consider them to be obvious or on autopilot. And we just have to be mindful that we don't hit the, the highlights as we are tattooing. Um, so we're not going to worry, a spend a lot of time on that. Instead, we're going to talk about the, the gray values, like anything that's not black or white. And what we're going to do is we're going to break them down into three sections, which are going to be dark, middle, and light. And it's important that we call the middle one middle because it is our middle or transitionary value. And it has two values on either side of it. So what we do next is we're going to use the... We have a natural ability to find shadows and understand which direction light is coming from, whether we've realized it up to this point or not. So it's much easier to spot shadows than it is to spot these values just kind of randomly on their own. So what we're gonna do is on the next page, we create a value chart. So what we've done is we've taken our two endpoints black and white, pure light and no light, and then we've broken it down into eight values, and then we've further broken down those 10 values total into five. But this can still be confusing, even though the black and the white is still obvious. We're trying to figure out these three. So now, if we look at only the shadows and understand that only black and then dark, which is reflected light, I don't know why I wrote that, reflected light. It's gonna make us much easier, make it much easier to find our darks if we pay attention only to the shadows. So if we come up here and we look just at the shadows, like I can see that the object is more or less in shadow like that and like that. And in these areas, I can see air like that's black and that's dark. The reason I know it has to be dark is because it's in a shadow and it's not black. So if we look now at shadows and just look for anywhere in the shadow that's not black and we have our darks automatically. So we don't have to worry about kind of deciding which, which is dark and which is black. We can just easily tell by looking at shadows. Um, so now we are going to actually do the same exact thing except now we are going to do it for the light side and same exact thing we're going to look at our original image and we're going to look at where the object is in the light so once again i can just be like okay the pair's in the light and the pair's in the light and then if i look into those sections i can see again that's a little bit darker and that's white and then these the areas of darkness and there's white. So process of elimination, by looking at the shadows and the light, we are able to better understand and we can get all of these super easily. And then all that's left is the transitionary value between these areas. So if we look at the pairs one more time, I can see that this is where the light is, and this is the shadow. That leaves more or less our middle values. 
And if we were drawing it for real, we would uh, be a little more careful, like we would kind of do that kind of thing, depending on what level. And we would get our middle values. And when we do the completed stencils, here we've put in our darks. And here we've added our middle values into the stencil. And here we've added our lights. What you end up with is a map of five values of light. And we've also done the, the core and the cast shadows. And all we're thinking about is how much light is on the object. So when we say that now, I mentioned it at the beginning, we're asking ourselves, right? Is it in shadow and it, is it black? If it's not, then it's gotta be dark. And then if we ask, is it light? Is it in the light? And the answer is yes, and it's not white, then it has to be light. So we're using process of elimination and this chart right here, because we wanna just make it easier on ourselves um, by, by, by looking only at the shadows and only at the light. And I wanna take it one step further and I wanna talk about value not as a 3D real light source, but instead as layers. Because with the way that this system works, uh, in illustrative designs and more flash type designs, we don't have to use a real light source. We can instead just think of them as levels of depth. So here we see kind of, uh, lots of lots of tattoos have three, where it's just gonna be black, and then it's a middle value, and then there's empty skin for black and gray, and that's gonna look like that. But to really kind of get more of a real light vibe, and then we have to add in our light and our dark, which this one and this one, which is gonna be our light and our dark, are missing from over here. So we're gonna try to focus on five, but we can also focus on three. And these five values are mimicking in a 2D space, the six properties of light. So when I'm doing more illustrative or flash type designs, I think of um, the five values more as depth and less as an actual light hitting the object. So this is a topographical map. And what it does is it, if you were to go around a mountain at the base and map out what, what it looks like, it looks something like that. And then you go up like a hundred or a thousand feet and you map it out again you can get the curves, and again, and I didn't have room, so I'm gonna do another big one. So if we imagine that is a mountain, crude mountain going all the way up and down, and you can see an actual topographical map, and like how close they are shows how quickly they're kind of going down, like it's gonna be fast, 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 and it slows down. And if you imagine the levels um, of depth, then, you can do something like that, where it looks like the things, the black and then the dark in the middle is actually going down kind of like depth. And so this is what I mean when I say that I have something like that. So that's what I'm talking about, just levels of depth. You can pull things up front and behind. So, if I were to take, say, a flash design, which I have one here, you can see how these things give the appearance that they're behind everything else. And I've also used for shortening by overlapping, but it gives it that depth like it's back. And then we have, these are the darks right here because I wanted those to be still behind. Then we come up to the middles, which is these. And then we come up to uh, the lights and the whites in there. And then I've kept uh, the sun pretty much only light, uh, white and light, so that it's all the way up front coming at me. So I think of just pulling the object, whatever it is, forward and the parts that I want to come out and pop up at me, um, I use uh, the light values and, and the white and even the middle. And if I wanted to put a little bit of darks in the sun, it would be really, really minimal, like just really small. 
um, just to show that that object is really coming up in, in the front of me. And that's how I would approach a more illustrative design. Um, and it's just, it's, you can still get the depth even if you don't want to deal with a 3D light source. And that's how I would apply it to illustrative. So we're going to create some gray washes uh, to use with our stencil. And the way I think about it is that each drop is going to be about 10% of our value scale. And because of that, we want, so this one right here is going to be 20 to 30%. And then this one is going to be 80% and this is gonna be a 50% wash. The reason it says two or three is because if I think that I want it to be overall lighter or overall darker, then I might, I might vary my drops depending on what the reference is or where I wanna take my artwork. But as the eight and the five are pretty much the same always, and then we order from white to black, from left to right, and this is how we would normally set up our ink cap. I personally, I uh, very rarely use that one. So we consider that one optional. If you wanna put white in, you can. And we can use these five or four washes to do the values that we just finished in our stencil. So uh, the black value, I would use, I would use my, my black water or my pure black ink and then I would go into my dark wash and then into my middle wash and my light wash. And I would leave my highlights empty skin. So we've now got five washes and a value chart and we've created a stencil and it's all mimicking the six properties of light using five values. Here, we're gonna look at how a piece of tattoo flash would be broken up in the same way as as that. So for this first one, we have a, we've broken it down into just our light form shadow, or our first three values, and then uh, our shadows. So what we're seeing for that one, well, we'll just, we won't go back anymore. <laughs> um, and then we've added here, we've added our our middle values in and we've used harsh separations just because we're trying to really see how it works and you can see that this one over here it looks cool and this one here it looks even cooler and if we break down these black areas and if we break down these white areas the the light areas in the light we can further add um, our light value and our dark value and then we end up with what looks like this one down here and what we do is if we smooth out these kind of harder transitions, we can make it look like it's a real light source. So these are just kind of from two to three to five and then to a gradient is kind of the direction we're trying to head uh, with, this, with this program. Uh, another thing we wanna talk about is Assuming that we fully grasped uh, this five value system, we want to move on to focusing on edges. Uh, edges, when we do realism or just in general, the edges of forms are always going to be hard edges. And the edges of a plane shift or of a cast shadow are, again, they're going to be hard, hard edges. But when we're actually working with a form, we have soft edges. So what that would mean is for our pear picture, for example, we can see that as we're moving across the form, oops, across the form, it's gonna be a nice soft edge, pretty much. Like there's not a harsh transition between these. Whereas when you get to the object boundary, then you get a harsh line and also on the cast shadow you get a harsh but not always as harsh line as well so this is just a real quick something to 
whenever we talk about value, we end up talking about edges. I know, again, the firesidetattoo.com has more info on edges. So you could head over there or you could head to YouTube. I have to do with the drawing database is a great resource if you want to learn more. And also, we want to talk about so far, we've pretty much just talked about a balanced composition, which means it's a perfectly smooth gradient and it's a perfect example of a single light source. But if we want to create a nighttime scene or if we want a darker tattoo or a lighter tattoo, we can reduce the amount of either shadow or light. I see this a lot in like watercolor and really bright designs that still have great value. It's they're just going to reduce uh, the amount of, 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 of shadow or light to make daytime or nighttime compositions. So that is essentially all that you need to know. And here we have the WCS value chart and we see that We have our phrase that we think about, how much light is on the object, and what that means is it uh, basically means that we're looking for shadows and lights, which is down here. And then we have our five ink washes, which mimic the six properties of light, and they also mimic this area here. And one thing that's cool is if we whip these together, and these together, and these together, and these together as we tattoo, if we smooth all of that out, we end up with a value gradient. So what that means is that we've managed to think about only this and look for this, use these to create this, which is really cool that we've literally simplified light theory into one sentence that we think about while we tattoo. If you can understand what I just said about this value chart, then you're ready to move on to color or to check out our black and gray instructional tattoo video, which will be up soon um, this summer at some point. We just haven't recorded it yet, but there will be a short explanation and I'll get that up as soon as possible. So take some time with this and really try and understand the five values. And once you really feel like you understand what I just said about all this, then you're ready to move on to module two and we can start to do some really, really incredible things with color. Once again, I'm Faith Wynn with wincolor.com. You have completed the first section of my book and we hope that you will stick with us and we'd like to hear some feedback that you might have or see some tattoos that you've done that maybe use some part of, of this module or of this chapter.